So we've been on a kick lately of designing products for different types of brands. So we decided to go ahead and make one for Zinn. So if you're not familiar with Zinn, they are nicotine patches that you will see a lot of baseball players, a lot of country singers, and a lot of folks just carrying around. But the problem with these is that this pack, this can, generally has to be carried around in the pocket. It's very cumbersome, and folks are generally grabbing from it pretty darn quickly. So we decided to go ahead and make a clip that's just really handy for it that didn't really exist and we couldn't find around anywhere. So how would you actually make this clip for mass production 3D printing to where Zing could make something that's useful for their customers without having to cut a mold? And this is a really big deal. A lot of these types of products can be made very easily right now because 3D printing lets you just create a 3D model, upload it, and then if somebody buys the product, Slant 3D can print it and ship it to them. You don't have to build a factory or build a mold anymore. You just have to have the idea and then upload a file. But how do you do this? So if we're looking at just this simple belt clip right here, First of all, orientation is a big factor. You don't want this snapping off because of layer lines. You want something durable to where you can squeeze it and beat it up and not have to worry about it ever breaking. So number one, print it on its side. This is the print bed, this is the clip. Print it up like that. That way all the layer lines are in the plane of all the points of flexure, both on the belt clip itself and on the actual canister clip as well. This lets you create a really durable part that's really reliable. The added benefit is on the interior where you have the logo, you're now able to have a crisp logo. You generally want logos and text on the side walls of prints in order to make sure that they come out as clear as possible. You also want that to be about a half a millimeter deep and then you can create it reliable. Right there we got our nice little slant logo, so it's a perfect thing set up. As far as the dimensions and the tolerances of it, since it's a compliant part, it's very easy to go ahead and just get this set up and working. And it clips right in there, people can pull it out, use it whatever they want. So it's a very simple type of part to make, but these type of accessories are kind of underproduced because they're a lot of effort to get started normally. Like we said at the beginning, if you were doing a molded version of this, you gotta go find a molder, and then you hope they make it right, and then you gotta test it out, and you gotta pay them thousands of dollars for the mold, and then you hope somebody buys this. Now, all you have to do is design this. Now, the one other types of tweaks that are sort of subtle is make sure that you kind of chamfer the bottom layer so that you don't have to worry about elephant footing anywhere on it. And of course, on the top layer, if you're really being clever, rather than having flat sides, you might actually kind of curve all the edges of this so that it doesn't look like a single flat top on it anywhere. This is a really simple way to improve the quality of the part. And you can mass produce these very easily. A part like this is very easy to produce both on demand and in mass production very affordably. In fact, more affordably than injection molding most of the time. Because with molding, you buy the mold and then you get your first part. You could use that cost of the mold to buy your first thousand parts with 3D printing on something like this. So why would you use the mold? And once you have this, you can also expand it. If this is working and people like it and people are wanting more things, 3D printing lets you create more and more variations and more of these types of accessories. You might have a walkie talkie or while we're in this vein of stuff, you might have a vape pen holder or whatever kind of clip it might be. But these sorts of niches are great markets to go into in order to create products because they're kind of underserved. So regardless of what you think about nicotine patches and that kind of thing, they are a popular product. So creating something simple like this to where people don't have to take up room inside of their pocket or scrape their phone screen or anything else with these, this is just handier, gives readier access, and is a really good quality product. And the cost of creating it is effectively zero. You learn how to create it and use your idea and then post it online and then people can get a hold of it. Five years ago, you could not have manufactured this for less than two to $5,000 the first time around. But now, you can start having it manufactured basically by signing up for a plugin. So that's pretty darn cool. If you're interested in learning how to actually do this, go ahead and go to slantpod.com to check out our Teleport app, which interfaces with any sort of e-commerce store to where you can upload a model, and then when somebody buys it, Slant 3D will print and ship that item to your customer. That way you don't have to build a factory anymore. You just have to design cool products and then take care of your customers. Slant 3D will take care of all of the manufacturing and all of the shipping. So that's that. Clips and accessories are a great market to be in. I highly encourage you to look at them in all kinds of other areas of the world from walkie-talkies to bubble gum. Have a great day, everybody.